I ventured into another blue zone of longevity on the island of Sardinia. Sardinia is the Mediterranean's second largest island, and it boasts nearly 10 times more centenarians per capita than the U.S. To find out why, I visited Casa Mediterranea, home of the Longevity Academy, founded by Sardinian biologist Dr. Ivo Pirizzi. Ivo? Frank! Oh, what a pleasure. Welcome. Appreciate it. Thank you, man. Please, come in. Wow, look at this. This is like your own little oasis back here. Yeah, thank you. Here in this cultural workshop and hotel, Ivo and his family share their knowledge of Sardinian food and culture with guests from all over the world. Ivo is especially focused on how the history of the island has impacted diet and longevity. It has been clearly proved that uh, the phenomenon of longevity in the Centurions didn't exist before, let's say, the first half of the 1800s. It's something that comes from an ancient society combined with improvement that are brought by modernity. Now you just, this is the cradle yeah. like we talked about, right? Yeah. It would be covered with more uh, grass. Yeah. Ivo put me to work preparing smreka, a 7,000 year old recipe for curing local gray mullet in seagrass from the nearby lagoon. And he showed me how to make semolina based fregola, a Sardinian pasta with a more modern Middle Eastern influence. It turns out the Mediterranean diet isn't fixed at all. It's an ongoing evolution of historical, ecological, and social forces. Different elements and aspects combined together have made uh, the phenomenon of longevity possible. And the social relationships is one of the most important. There are a lot of studies which prove clearly that loneliness is killing a lot of people. So that being interconnected is one of the most important uh, aspects. To explore this social aspect, Ivo took me to meet a few of his friends in town. In between the food and the people in the Sardinian culture, there is a bridge which is called wine. Ciao, Didi. Hey, ya. Ciao. 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 This 200-year-old cellar known as the Antica Cantina Cadeo is where brothers Tiberio and Marco continue the family tradition of producing Vernaccia di Oristano, a sherry-like wine made from a local variety of grapes, likely brought to Sardinia by the Phoenicians in ancient times. This local wine isn't for sale, mind you. It's only for sharing with friends. So if we become friends, right? That is a possibility. I can come here and sit down with you guys. Tiberio ha molti amici. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> he said Tiberio has a lot of friends. Yeah. <laughs> tutti. <laughs> and everyone drinks. <laughs> and this is a fabric, right, of the of the communal experience here. Oh, no, oh no. more friends. This, this is, is what expect. happens. It is what happens oh, regularly. Friends. When, when his friends oh, yeah. see uh, <laughs> the door open, the open, the ah, open door, yeah. they will they will sneak in in order to see if something ah, is up. fantastic. Yeah. Che poi le cose improvvisate sono le cose più belle. Ah, that's beautiful. He said the things that could happen uh, sort of improvised and uh, spontaneously are always the best things. Once the official greetings were over, Marco invited me to help grill the mugine, locally caught gray mullet in the cabra style, seasoned only with salt. So we're taking the fish one by one and we're putting them on the grill. Perfecto. Bravo. When we sat down together, I was treated to homemade sausage, local anchovies, and a Sardinian delicacy, botarga, the salted and cured roe of the gray mullet. I forgot to share a very important piece of information. This botarga has been homemade by this guy. He made it himself, here. Yeah. yeah. Evo also prepared a barley-based dish with fresh tomatoes and basil from his garden. According to longevity studies, consumption of barley used to be a key staple in Blue Zone diets. Is this considered an ancient grain? It is, it is yeah. considered an ancient grain, and from a nutritional point of view, it is the cereal with the lowest glycemic index. Right, but this would be a, obviously advantageous if you, if you have diabetes or things like that where you absolutely, want to lower, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And okay. it is important to bring it up again because unfortunately, we have just left it behind. Last but not least, Marco served the grilled fish and I asked Ivo about the essentials of the Mediterranean diet. The two concepts that uh, are worth mentioning are locally produced and seasonal. 
and possibly your own production. And and bring and friends community. together. Community. Yeah, people that you like. All right. The next morning, Ivo and I set out to explore a blue zone in the Barbaja. Throughout history, Sardinians retreated time and time again to safety in this rugged, mountainous heartland. Here, they perfected ways of living in community and eating from the land that experts think improved their longevity. This is actually the only place on the planet where the number of male centenarians exceeds female centenarians. Hey, hey! Hey, y'all! Hey! In these hills, shepherds like artisanal dairy farmer Massimo Secchi still tend to sheep and goats, producing milk and cheeses that are especially healthy. The place here is tough, is harsh, yeah. and the plants, in order to survive, need to produce certain substances like antioxidants. Those substances that are health-promoting will be eventually found in the milk and later in the cheese. Incredible. And his relationship that he's created with these goats as well is pretty special, right? I mean, it, he knows I mean, their names. Yeah, everyone is named. It's incredible. <laughs> so not only do you know where it's coming from, you know yeah. the name of the goat you that know, produced you, the milk. You do know. Fantastic. Yeah. Look at this. Amazing. Evo took me into the hills above Seulo, where shepherds traditionally tended to their herds. We met up with Massimo here as he produced fresh cheese from his goat's milk. Research has shown that goat's milk is especially helpful in preventing neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. This is incredible. You can, you can I even can try. Just try it right now. You will be impressed. Get out of here. Isn't it incredibly sweet? I mean, it, it's simple, but still it is delicious, isn't it? It's amazing. And it is delicious because it comes from a place which is unique in itself, because only certain plants and herbs grows there. And those goats are eating those herbs, it's getting into the milk, yeah. and that natural flavor yeah. that I'm tasting and, and is coming right from And eventually those that. incredible flavors will be transferred to the milk and eventually to the cheese. Now, yeah, is there nothing else added to this at this point? This is no, it. no, no, this is it. That's incredible. Sei un artista. Grazie. <laughs> After leaving the Barbaja, Ivo took me south to a very special place in his journey of studying longevity, the village where he grew up. We went to meet his family at his childhood home for a lesson in traditional Sardinian bread making. So she said that her, her, her mom would teach her these and these have been passed down from generation to generation. So all these designs and the method that they're working with has been a generational thing. So. And I'm about to ruin it, apparently. <laughs> Traditional pane cocoy is made from just four ingredients, water, flour, yeast, and a pinch of salt. But this bread isn't like the loaves we have at home. The dough is made with semolina, a healthier flour made from durum wheat, and it's risen with mother's yeast rather than brewer's yeast. There is a huge difference. One could be considered junk food and the other a jewel. The bread made with the mother dough is a very complex and incredible thing. And there are some families that, that are still working with the mothers that can be 30, 40 or 50 years old. It's incredible. So yeah. for generations yeah. they have kept this mother yeast yes, as, as yes. alive. Yeah. We've, she's said we've run out of room. That's how much bread they've made. So that's. Uh, that's a lot. There is something that, it, that has been kept alive, which is called in Sardinian language samandada. Every time that one oven is lit on, a uh, few loaves will be delivered to the ones which are in need. This is something that helps to bring the community together. During the bread's second rising, Ivo's dad put me to work getting the oven ready. The whole pane kokoi process takes about four hours, so we took a break and enjoyed a homemade lunch. Everything we ate was produced by the family. The chickpeas, the tomatoes, the olive oil. So I asked what they each thought was the secret ingredient to a long life. 
They said things like tranquility, open air, and keeping the stress of life in check. And she also mentions, very important, both of them, how important it is to keep family close and friends close and to nurture those relationships. Because as we get older, we are, tend to be isolated. But here, what they're trying to do is keep all the friends, as you see, gathered around the table and so nurturing those, uh, those relationships. Very, very good. And at this point, I think that uh, you should try a little bit of my father's red wine. This is vino fatto in casa. After lunch, it was finally time to bake the bread. And when it came out hot from the oven, Ivo's mom let me do what I'd like to think was the most important part. Hello? Oh. That's it. Yeah. Ecco, finito. Shall we try our creation? Something which is uh, sacred here is to cut the bread without the knife at the beginning. Okay, yeah. Please, first for the lady. It was testing me. Yeah, okay, here we go. Oh. <laughs> mm. Mm. Exploring Sardinia with Evo, I learned a lot about the importance of eating locally and knowing where your food comes from. But I was most surprised by how history, ecology, and community are truly inseparable from longevity and health.